Good morning, everybody. Got another big house and garage you're doing today. Got a little upper piece here, the big piece is down there. I'm gonna get this truck back down there. Got Harvey here to help us today. Support. See, I gotta get him back down there so we can tailgate all that right there. Good size walkout basement. Let's hope he doesn't lose any creed coming down this. This is pretty steep right here. Sometimes some concrete will come out the back. He's fully loaded, he's got 10 and a half on. Hey everybody, welcome back. If you're a regular subscriber, this is Mike with Everything About Concrete. I really appreciate you guys that tune in and watch all my videos. I mean, you guys are great. Thank you for doing that. If you're new to my channel, well, like the title says, my channel's Everything About Concrete. All we do is pour and finish concrete. We do stamp concrete. We do patios, pool decks. We do a lot of floors like this. So if you like that kind of stuff, please go ahead down there and hit subscribe now. Now today's a pretty typical day for us. We, every single morning we're usually pouring concrete for something. And we do a lot of these, these uh, residential house floors. We have a lot of contractors that just hire us to come in and do their floors. They do the foundations, but they don't like to do the floors. So we specialize in doing these concrete floors and we do a ton of them. And today is just a regular day for us. You know, we pour a lot of these big houses this is a pretty good size house. It's got about 2,500 square feet, like I said in the beginning of the video. And for where we live up here in Maine, that's a pretty good size house. It's a walkout, what we call this type of foundation, a walkout foundation or a daylight basement. Let me know if you guys call them something different down in the comments. What do you guys call these type of foundations like this? And if you don't, if you live in an area where you don't have foundations, um, where basically you just have slabs let me know where you're from you know put that down put your state down put your country down in the comments and uh, let me know we most all the houses that we do probably 75% of them have a foundation like this and then maybe 25% are just on a regular concrete slab with no foundation now we're using our regular mix today. It's a 3500 PSI mix. It's got microfiber in it. It's got a high range water reducer in it. And, the, and that allows us to pour it at a pretty, pretty good loose slump, a workable slump that we like working with. Somewhere in between a six and a seven slump with that high range water reducer. So we, that's a, that's a normal pour for us. This thing was pretty long. It was 80 feet long and this this main area was about 25 feet wide now we're working for garrett bub davis today he's the builder up there if you want to follow the build then go ahead down there and go ahead you know check his channel out i'll have a link for it down in the description subscribe to him he's kind of new on youtube so check him out and you can follow this whole build from start to finish now i'm in there i'm i've got my small screed i'm getting around those pipes we don't usually use the vibrating screed around the pipes we're using mbw's screed demon today the battery powered one and that that thing is just the way to go when you're doing flat work like this if if you've never tried one i would highly recommend getting one we i was i was taught just to kick screed and you know back in the day we, we've never used vibra screeds or power screeds or anything like that we kick screeded everything so I was, I was, you know, pretty sold on just doing it that way. And then quite a few years ago now, we tried one of those power screeds and I don't know, it was okay. But then we got these MBW ones and I, I had a gas powered one and I still have it. 
before the battery one and then when we tried the battery one it was like oh boy this thing's a way to go it's just so so lightweight and with the slump that we use it makes screeding so much easier for us so if you know i would highly recommend getting one of those i do have a link for that down in the description if you want to check it out but mbw's battery powered screed demon you you watch darren here as he screeds we always strike our wet pads by hand and then we use the the battery powered one for the main areas you can just see how easy that is it's it, it's really nice when you got two guys behind you that really know how to rake too i mean that's really what makes it easy but pulling down the mud with that thing is the way to go versus bending over and kick screeding that's got a 12 foot board on it too they, they got all kinds of different sides of boards you can put on it So, but so far, I mean, that's two trucks down right there. So that's two ten and a half yards, 21 yards we got dumped already. Um, it's It's been about 30 minutes or so. What's nice on these big ones when they don't have too many pipes is you can really dump a truck out pretty fast and get it out of there and get it back to the concrete plant. They sent us out three straight trucks. So he, he batched out three trucks as fast as he could. And then... You know I told them this would be a fast dump so get them right to us we'll dump them right out get them right back to you which is what they like and we got that little upper piece too now I'm gonna have that the upper piece I showed you earlier I'll show you here at the end of the video and also we're gonna I'm gonna show you the complete finishing process too I videoed that um, and then I sped it up so you can see just what kind of like our day goes as we finish this and we get the sawed contraction joints in it and all that so stay tuned for that so now we're on to the last truck and this last truck is going to finish this plus it's going to do the the upper piece up above what's nice about being able to tailgate like this is it makes it really makes the pouring really easy you know we don't need a pump don't need the conveyor truck we can just back the truck right up and get it right out of the chute. Now, a lot of our trucks are rear dumps for, the, for this company that we use. And some of the companies in Maine do have the front dumps, and those are nice too. But this company is really local to us. It's really close by. So we use it a lot, and we don't mind having the rear dumps. It's just something we're used to. Most of you guys, I know, you don't even have rear dumps, so... If you don't ever use rear dumps, it's all you use is front dumps. Let me know where you're from in the comments. And, and uh, it, let me know if it's just the front dumps you like. Do you have good drivers? Do you have drivers that are harder to work with? Because we, personally, I just like controlling the chute myself, how fast it comes out, how fast I move the chute, where I, where I pull the driver ahead and all that. I'm just used to doing that. And it, sometimes that makes less work for you. You're going to be able to see here how Darren, this is about the typical speed we go when we use this. So, I mean, it's not crazy fast, but it's definitely not slow either. We can, we can screed a, you know, a 12 by 10 area in about 15 or 20 seconds. So it's really not too slow. And it's really quiet too. It's really quiet, really lightweight, like I said. We use Milwaukee batteries in this. I got a 5 amp battery in there and that'll... That'll last for three or four floors before I have to recharge it easily. So Harvey's here helping us. Harvey, Harvey just helps us out once in a while. He works for himself. But sometimes when we, when we need an extra guy, we just call him and he shows up. And <laughs> he's great about that. So we're lucky to be able to have somebody like Harvey just to show up. He knows he's been doing concrete for a long, long time. So he knows everything about concrete. Now I'm going to just quickly show you this upper piece. We're doing this also. I'll have this on another video. Actually, it's on a training video. and It's going to be on the training video in my Concrete Underground training course. So if you want to learn how to pour and finish concrete like we do, check out the Concrete Underground below. So here's kind of a typical finishing day for us. You can see how the sun, you know, it's still, it's about probably 9.30 in the morning now. We got done pouring at 8.30ish. And this is about an hour, hour and a half later. So between 9.30 and 10, that part in the sun starts drying really fast. And then the part in the shade, 
barely dries at all. I mean, it's going to be like finishing two floors here. So Darren's going to have to, you know, keep up with the sun area and, and keep working back into the shade with the power trowel. We're also using MBW's high torque power trowel here. That's a really nice power trowel and it's got the combo blades on it. So the good thing about combo blades on a floor like today is you can keep you can keep going over the part in the sun that's getting that's drying really fast and getting hard, but also keep working into the shade where it's softer and not have to change back and forth between, you know, float blades and finish blades. That's what's good about having combo blades. So you can see how they're just they get that hit and then they wait and let it set up a little bit more and then they come back and they hit it again. And that's part of the process of finishing. You don't just keep going over it and over and over it. Once you hit it, a lot of times you gotta let it dry up a little bit before you hit it again. And that part in the sun out there is drying more, it's drying more than twice as fast as the part in the shade. That's the tricky part when you come to finishing and you've got sun and shade like this. You can kinda of see how the sun's moving and how this corner back here, this, you know, towards us where the power trowel is right now is going to just stay in the shade and that's going to be the longest part of finishing here it's going to take the longest to, to dry up on them so they do their edges by hand they take a steel trowel go around and do their edges and then they feather it in there with the power trowel you can see Darren's kind of going around getting the they let that shade pot set up a lot longer than they do the sun part. The part in the sun now is a little bit darker. You can see that's kind of shined out. That's done. And these guys, they're going to hit it one more time, I believe. And then they're going to start snapping their chalk lines. And you'll see how they saw this thing up. It's pretty cool. You can see how long they leave this. They probably left that, you know, 45 minutes. They let it just sit there in the shade and let it cure up before they hit it this last time. And then they'll go, Luke kind of measured out there for the saw lines. They'll snap their chalk lines. <clears throat> and then they'll, we always saw all our floors like this. And it really does help control the cracks. Especially when you saw the same day like this. So that's it guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, we'll see you on the next one.